You know, this may come as a surprise to absolutely nobody, but I love the fact that we're finally starting to explore main Flash staples like the Flash Museum on The Flash. Yeah, it may have taken the writers four long seasons and a handful of season five episodes to get us there, but it was definitely worth it. I mean, those scenes of Barry and Iris wandering through the Flash Museum during this week's episode, titled Memorabilia, were awesome. All those costume displays and the little toys and comics and stuff lining those shelves, it's like a big ass comic book store, only it's not in danger of going out of business anytime soon. Seriously though, the only real problem I have with this whole setup is that it actually tells us that season 5 villain Cicada is apparently still running around killing people years after the Flash disappeared in the Arrowverse version of the Crisis. Seriously? Now I have no problem with one of the Flash's villains actually getting away once in a while and popping up in later episodes, so long as how they actually get away in the first place is done well, but after everything we've seen Cicada go through in the show so far, it kind of seems like he should have been killed a long time ago, or at the very least have been caught by somebody. I mean, come on, if Killer Frost can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, I'm sure Green Arrow would have had zero problem taking him out in Nora's timeline. Not all superheroes are metahumans, though. What about Green Arrow? Yeah, he tried to once, but... Then again, who's to say something like that didn't actually happen? I mean, why else would a guy so focused on getting revenge on metahumans just randomly stop his serial killing rampage unless something happened to him? Like maybe he dies, or he gets hit with that cure cisco has been working on, or whatever. Either way, what the hell? How slash why does Cicada still exist by the time Nora's walking around? None of it adds up. Well, what if it's because this Cicada isn't Orland Wire at all, but is actually his niece, Grace Gibbons? Seriously, think about it. We know she has plenty of motive. I mean, her parents were murdered by some random metahuman. Her parents were at the ATM when the meta attacked. And we've heard from Grace herself in this most recent episode that she can actually hear everything being said around her while she's in a coma. Grace, how did you hear Orlin that night? You were in a coma. I know, but I've been listening. I can't imagine sitting there all day constantly listening to two people talking about how terrible metas are and how they should all die would do anything positive for a little girl's mental state, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of, don't forget, it's been confirmed that the theme for the whole season is legacy. We saw it in how Nora idolized Barry, and we're seeing the same thing in Grace with the way she clearly idolizes her uncle. Both of them want to be like the people they look up to. So assuming Orlin dies or gets arrested or whatever later this season, it could possibly give Grace more motivation to pick up where he left off and keep targeting metahumans. Plus, remember how Caitlin mentioned that Grace Grace had a piece of the Star Lab satellite stuck in her head? That is a satellite shard full of dark matter in Grace's head. We think that the dark matter was seeping out to create a barrier around her brain. Did you notice how they mentioned that a bunch of dark matter was leaking out into her brain? If so, then you might also remember that last season's villain DeVoe actually had his personality and behavior change over time because of all the extra dark matter he was adding into his system with all the body swapping he was doing. Is it possible that the repeated transference has affected your cognitive functioning? There is nothing wrong with my mind. Initially we set out to enlighten the world, now you want to rule it. And I know this one's another one of those flash writers are beating you over the head with the idea kind of hints, but the dream cicada chasing after Nora is clearly modeled after a grown up Grace, right? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the blonde hair and very clearly female face definitely make it look like this cicada's actually Grace herself. Hmm, I wonder why they would make it look like that. So that's it then, right? Grace is being influenced by circumstance, having to listen to her uncle's crazy ramblings every so often, and having a big ass satellite shard in her head, and all three of those things combined cause her to grow up and eventually wake up, learn to control the dagger, and don the cicada suit herself at some point. Grace is the future cicada confirmed, I guess? Well, there's a couple of things wrong with that idea. First off, assuming all of that's true, then why doesn't future Cicada look female? I mean, we saw a picture of the guy in the Flash Museum, and compared to the female Cicada we saw defending Grace this past episode, this is very clearly a guy. I mean, yeah, the museum could be using an old picture of Cicada, but considering Grace Cicada would have been running around for a few years at this point, I find it hard to believe that nobody managed to get a picture of her. Probably more important though, she'd be way too young to start being Cicada by the time he apparently came back. Remember, Grace is supposed to be nine at this point in time, and the display at the Flash Museum says he comes back in 2024, seven years after she's knocked out. But when Cicada resurfaced in 2024... So what, are we supposed to believe that the police and the various superheroes in the Arrowverse are having trouble with a teenage Cicada? Seriously? Come on, what gives? Well, maybe we've been thinking about it all wrong. What if Grace doesn't just pick up the Cicada mantle? What if she's always been Cicada? No, I don't mean she's putting on the costume while her uncle's at work. I mean that the accident that put her in a coma also either turned her into a psychic meta, or just linked her and her uncle together, making her the master to his blaster, if you will. I mean, we know that the satellite shard in her brain, that looks like the same wound on her uncle's chest by the way, is leaking a bunch of dark matter, and she does have a potentially creepy exchange with Nora when they head over to her dream house in the last episode. <sighs> 
He thinks he takes care of me now, but I really take care of him. Both of which suggest that Orlin and Grace are connected in some way, allowing her to either outright control or lean her uncle towards thinking, hey, I should just go out and start murdering random people. That'd be cool. I'm sure it didn't exactly hurt that Orlin also happened to bump into a random anti-metahuman group either though, just saying. It's these metas wreaking havoc unchecked. Seriously though, it'd be kind of a neat circle. Grace overhears her uncle and that one random doctor hating on metas, uses that to further her own hatred of metas, then sends those feelings back to her uncle, further refining his hate and helping him change into a killer. Or, alternatively, all that dark matter leaking into Grace's brain could have unlocked her metagene and given her psychic abilities, allowing her to control or influence anybody, not just her uncle. So yeah, maybe Orlin Cicada does get taken out by Team Flash at some point, but Grace uses her powers to trap some new sucker and make them the new Cicada in the future. Mind blown. Okay, so it's not the most original theory in the world, like tons of people have been thinking about it at this point, but honestly, the writers gave us so much evidence this past episode, I'd have been surprised if nobody else was thinking this. Either way, I guess we'll find out for sure as we keep getting new episodes of The Flash. But anyways guys, that's my take on whether or not Grace is the real Cicada in the fifth season of The Flash. If you guys agreed with anything I said in this video, or if you have your own theories you want to throw out there, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below, otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.